Hey guys, how's it going? I'm here bringing you another EX Plus analysis video. Don't forget that in the video's description you can find a playlist of my previous EX Plus analysis videos and a playlist of my tier list videos starting from January 2020. For this video I'll talk about Yang and Porom and at the end of the analysis there's going to be a should you pull section giving you my recommendation on pulling or not. I'm going to go over their strengths and weaknesses as well as which artifacts you should be aiming for and finally if they are worth investing and how much you should invest in them. Before we begin, I want to remind you that these are just my opinions and you should always do some research on your own before deciding on things and hopefully this video will help you on that. So let's get this double analysis started. Starting off with Yang because he is the most easy one and he's a very simple but strong physical DPS unit. I'm always happy to see units that never had their moment in the spotlight receive a good treatment from Square Enix, the most recent example being Yang who comes tomorrow. Going over his skills, first three of them are now dealing splash damage with his HP++ doing 20% while his Kick plus and EX plus doing 80% which is equal to the likes of RNA's High Wind. His focus skill is not a dead turn anymore because he follows it up with an AoE 3 hit brave plus HP attack that deals split damage equally among all enemies. What does that mean for Yang? Well, his damage per turn is through the roof. Everything he does is dish out huge amounts of splash or AoE damage, making every single one of his skills carry their weight in terms of damage. Yang's skills have low action delay, which is similar to high turn rate, so Yang can almost always position himself favorably. Unfortunately, Yang's base skills have low hit count. I'm specifying base skills because his EX is a great single target shaving skill. Last but not least, similar to Shadow, Yang provides no utility whatsoever other than his pure damage. Well, he does have a low chance to counter the enemy's brave attacks with a one single target brave attack of his own, which is basically a joke at this point in the game, but I had to mention it to cover everything. Recommended artifacts for Yang are of course 108 attack and 330 max brave, with Mighty Kick being a consolation prize. Now let's see if he's worth investing in or not. If, one, if Yang is one of your favorite units, then I'm sure you will max him out, and between you and me, you will not regret it. If you are just looking for strong units for your roster though, while trying to maximize the value of your resources, then you have more things to consider. Like I said just now, Yang is just a really selfish DPS, similar to the likes of Shadow, but more AoE oriented, so what is my recommendation? If you are looking for strong physical melee DPS, then Yang can fill that role out for you, but if you have already invested in Shadow and Lightning, or if you are planning on building Jack in, at the end of the month, then I would not recommend on spending your resources on Yang. Now let's see how much you should, should invest in Yang if you decide to do so. Giving a book to Yang allows his EX to overflow up to 120% of his max brave, while also tremendously increasing its potency. Pretty basic upgrade in my opinion. Unless you really want that ingot out of him, I would not even use a book cause this upgrade is not worth it. If you invest one ingot in Yang, he gets the usual attack and max brave permanent boost, another pretty basic upgrade. Giving two ingots to him slightly raises the recast speed of his EX, allows him to begin the stage with his kick plus variant without using focus, and he also begins with both of his, both of his generic buffs and his EX buff called Wife's Encouragement. This buff increases Yang's attack and max overflow limit. Now this is an upgrade that is worthy of 2 ingots, it's very loaded. Now finally if you invest 3 ingots it increases the brave hits on his EX from 5 to 8. Also once again tremendously increasing its potency and giving it slightly more overflow. Last and certainly not least, his Brave++ and HP++ variants are unlocked. In conclusion, if you don't want to invest in Yang, you can use him in a lower tier dimensions end stage with just his base EX, but if you would like to build up this unit, you gotta put 3 ingots in him 
as he is a pure DPS unit and anything less would be a huge waste. And with this, the young analysis comes to an end. Now it's time for the rear prize of the banner, which is Porom. Porom's EX Plus raises her to be up to date with the other Chaos viable units in the game. Not to say that she was useless before her realization. A lot of players kept using Porom in stages with heavy party HP damage with great success. Her EX Plus fixes a lot of her problems, like having to burn through her base skills in order to reach her maximum aura potential at 3 stacks of each frame buff. I'm gonna go over her only problems in my opinion before moving on to the good stuff. First of all, a lot of supports nowadays, like a lot of supports nowadays, she has zero shaving capabilities outside of her brave plus attack which you will most likely rarely use. My other problem with Porom is that even though both of her base skills are unique and offer different things along with their battery, they both raise the turn count without dealing damage to the enemy, and I can't help but comparing them, com comparing them with poor Penelos and Hope skills, which are free turns. Maybe that's just my problem though. Ok, so Porom's HP++ attack is almost identical to Gishtola's, and we all know how strong of a filler HP attack that is. She offers top party utility with her very strong auras, increasing the party's HP, max HP while providing a party-wide HP damage reduction buff and various forms of battery and healing. Her EX deals 50% splash damage now which helps her carry her weight damage-wise, and her first skill has a low chance of inflicting confusion to the enemies, which is a nice bonus. Recommended artifacts for Porom are White Mage Talent Boost 2 stars for the party wide attack and max brave aura and 330 max brave for herself. So let's see if Porom is worth investing in or not. Porom becomes yet another strong support with her EX realization. Even though she doesn't have free turns like Hob and Penelo, or she doesn't offer turn manipulation like Ignis or Rem. Porom brings something to the table that no other support can do to this extent. Her party-wide HP damage reduction and increasing the maximum HP of her team, making it real hard for you to die even if you do fuck up during a stage. So is she is worth investing in? Well, if you have Bash or you're planning on building Snow this month, then I guess you could get by without building Porom. I'm not saying that Bash and Snow offer the amount of protection Porom does, but they are good, good alternatives whatsoever. Now let's see how much you should invest in here if you decide to do so. Porom's EX Plus upgrade are quite a mouthful, so please bear with me as I try to explain them in the best of my abilities. Investing a book in Porom slightly increases the following effects. The amount of HP restored to the party based on Porom's max HP, the limit in which the HP restore can overflow in order to increase their maximum HP, and the Brave battery based on her max Brave. In addition, the Brave battery can overflow up to 120% and it finally slightly increases the team's Brave battery based on HP damage dealt with the EX skill. Investing 1 in God in Porom gives her the usual attack and max brave boost. Moving on. 2 ingots allows her EX to grant a new buff called Secrets of White Magic, which increases the party's HP recovery and the overflow limit of their gained brave, like brave regen or batteries. Her EX also extends the duration of her other 2 frame buffs by 1 turn, which helps with her longevity a lot. Finally, with 2 ingots, Porom is able to begin the stage with her EX buff and her other 2 frame buffs at 2 stacks each, which means they can reach their maximum potential with one use of each base skill. This is yet another st strong upgrade from Porom, but leaving a character at 2 ingots instead of 3, it's just playing wrong 90% of the time, cause, so I wouldn't stop here. Investing 3 ingots in Porom slightly increases the brave gain and the limit of which that battery can overflow when she's using her EX, 
and that skill now deals 50% splash damage. Finally, she unlocks her Brave and HP++ variants, with the second one being a, a very important skill for her. In conclusion, if you want to build Porom, then you need to give her 3 ingots no questions asked. Leaving her with just a book is still fine because she could be really helpful in a dimensions and stage if you decide to but if you decide to put ingots in here, then I would say that 3 is the minimum, mainly for the 50% splash EX damage and her HP++ which is amazing. And that pretty, pretty much covers Porom, I would say. Now let's see if you should pull on her banner. After everything we've said about Yang and Porom, what do you think? Should you pull for either or both of them? Let me know in the comments below. My, su my suggestion is to pull for Porom and if you happen to get Yang along the way, it's a good bonus but I would not chase his EX. This banner features two easy to learn units with simple kits and it's a perfect banner for new players, but I would still recommend the Awakening Wave banner which is still up for over this one. I personally plan to use my usual 50 tickets to see what comes my way and then decide things from there. And that was it. I hope you stuck with me until the end and that you enjoyed watching or listening to this video. Don't forget to drop a like and also consider subscribing if you like my content. If you have any suggestions of things you want me to cover, I would very much like to hear about them. Take care guys and I'll see you in my next video in a few hours. See ya!